Oster can come back and tie things up. And the bans will be interesting, to say the least. I don't think they're going to ban the Aurelia. I don't, I don't really think that's the reason why they lost that last game. They just I got just, a little bit antsy. I more wonder, because, yeah, I, I agree. I don't think they're going to ban the Aurelia. I, I wonder the if they're going to ban the... smaller, smarter. Well, I wonder if they're going to ban the Varus again. I wouldn't think so this time. All right, Victor will be banned once again by SK Telecom, though. Uh, are they going to ban Callista away from Prey? LeBlanc, one more time, of course. And will it be Varus for the final ban from the Koo Tigers? I would be surprised. I feel like they can ban something a little bit more useful. Well, it is it is a threat, and they're going to ban Rumble, actually, one of those common bans as we discussed, against Marin, known for a long, long time for his abilities on that champion. And now, there's Callista. Okay. So this does free up the Maokai, but I doubt that's going to be the first pick right here. Gragas still available. Sivir going to be prioritized by the Tigers. Wow, okay. That does give a lot of good options over to SK Telecom. Now, Gorilla's been playing a lot of Soraka in solo queue, and he's always said that he wants to, you know, make that champion work. It's a little bit of teasing coming in from SKT there. I don't think we're going to get get it uh, picked today, though. Yeah, and the Narin. Well, I have to retract that statement. The only way we'll see Soraka today is if Faker decides to play a mid, because why not, you know? Why not? Why not have one of the greatest playmakers in League of Legends history play an absolutely <laughs> non-playmaking champion? That's really exciting. Hey, wouldn't be the first time. Uh, it will be a switch over to that Maokai instead alongside the Gragas. So going for that big time tankiness in the draft from SK Telecom. And uh, do you think... What will Hojin do in response here? A, a surprisingly few number of jungle bans today. In fact, zero so far in this best of three. Well, do you feel like we might see SKT just default back to that safer tanky style that we've seen them play so much? The Urgot, the, uh, well, maybe the Vayne instead. Not, not exactly tanky. No, but they have the Gragas, and again, time yep. and time again this season in Korea, we see the, the synergy between Gragas and Vayne, able to get that isolation. They also have great peel with the Janna, and they have another single target CC with the Maokai to combo into a lot of Vayne auto attacks. So this is a pretty good composition from SK Telecom. I like Vayne and Gragas quite a bit together. Yeah, they've got Janna to help as well in terms of keeping Vayne alive, boosting her a little bit, and then separating. Now the players on the other team. The problem is, is playing Vayne into Nautilus can be a bit tricky because there's a guaranteed CC that is going to be coming your way in that depth charge. And we could see potentially Lissandra here. Lissandra not a champion we've seen in a long time, but I if like you want though. lockdown onto Vayne, and Smeb is really good at playing Lissandra too. Yeah, I actually really like the idea of this because uh, it bypasses a lot of the things that would normally knock you away with that E. And if you can get in and ult Vayne or ult yourself and catch Vayne, that's a, a big problem for SKT. Yep, but it's like they're not going to do it. Could be Top Rek'Sai, though. Could be. Top Rek'Sai, one of the most dominant split pushers, and that's what it's going to be. Indeed. All right, so the final pick over to SK Telecom. We'll see what Faker plays. Could be anything. We really don't know. <laughs> What does he want to play into this Azir? I kind of hope we get to see his Zed again. He still likes to play Zed a lot in solo queue. Yeah. He, it is his uh, top undefeated champion right now, 9-0 and zero all time on that. And it would give them some answers to a split pushing Rek'Sai as well. So there is a lot of use for it. And again, he's another champion that does really well with isolated targets from the Gragas. So we could see something crazy like, they, oh, could we see the AP Kog'Maw too. Something that Faker's very accustomed to playing, but Faker has not played since the introduction of Luton's Echo. Well, there it is. So yeah, Faker's going to be playing that Kogma in mid lane. And yeah. this could work well. I mean, all that poke damage is going to set up some pretty easy kills for Bang once people get separated. Yeah, and SK Telecom played a lot of AP Cog in the summer season of last year. Mm -hmm. However, AP Cogma, like I said, has not been played in Korea since the introduction of Luton's Echo. Obviously, we see it a lot in the LCS regions. Um, after Power of Evil started playing that and realized the power spike that Luton's Echo has. And so it's a big, big poke composition here, being able to poke again and then isolate a target for this vein. So there's going to be a lot of preparation before Bang goes in on the vein. But Kog'Maw's very 
vulnerable in the early stages of the game. And I would be scared because uh, a good flank with Rek'Sai or with Eve could be pretty devastating to the back line of SKT. I think Faker's going to have to play this pick a little bit more cautiously than he's normally used to playing champions as well, too, if he wants to survive to a strong mid game. Well, the nice thing is you can lose lane pretty hard, as Incarnation showed us in that TSM Cloud9 <laughs> matchup. And guess what? Kogma is still great. That's one of the That's things true. that I really like about mid Kogma is that if he gets level 11, he gets that Lutens. Doesn't matter how far behind he is, he's still going to do a lot of damage and have a lot of presence on the game. Yeah, well, Ku Tiger's trying to tie it up. SKT trying to get a 2 0. Let's see who takes it. All right, welcome to Summoner's Rift. Fans cheering on their teams. And we'll see what SK Telecom can do with this mid Kogma. There it is, Faker playing the Aurelia game number one. Now the Kogma played Varus last time. Like I said, you just really have no idea what Faker's gonna play lately. Faker is slowly turning into power of evil. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Well, as long as he keeps his mechanics up. <laughs> Bang is using the uh, SK Telecom Bane skin. Well, why wouldn't you? Rip Bank or Rip uh, Piglet. He went to the afterlife of North America. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, pro gaming afterlife, you know. <laughs> the uh, Korean pros retirement home. <laughs> yep. I thought that was China. <laughs> be arguments both ways. It's pretty much just the rest of the world at this yes. point. It's true. They release him into the wider world. <laughs> oh, Faker. Oh. <laughs> pretty close. Can't uh, can't deny the recall, though. Either way, it's a bit annoying for Smeb to get poked out so heavily early on. Now, we saw Kuve doing so well on this top lane, Rek'Sai, this season. It, the scary thing is about Rek'Sai is that She's such a lane bully with all of her sustain, and once you get that black cleaver, you there are a lot of problems uh, with nobody. Pretty much nobody can one v one a a split pushing Rexai, and you have two teleports. So while Rexai is not the most impactful champion in the late game, the map control Rexai Rexai gives you is crazy with items. So it should be fun. Uh, Rexai should be able to take on this vein, I I would think. See well, we will see. That is another nice thing about the Vayne, though, is she is one of the best duelists in the game. It has the range advantage. So going into going into that one or the one v one in the split push, maybe Vayne can hold her own in that situation. Uh, Bang tumbling in for more damage against Gorilla. Wolf and Bang just trying to put a little bit of their own damage in on this lane. The other great thing about split pushing Rek'Sai is the Tremor Sense because you don't need wards like a lot of traditional split pushing top laners. You can play more risky. In fact, your teammates could go ward the opposite side of the map in that case. It's true. And so there's there's a lot of really good edges that this Rek'Sai gives you. And Oh, Hojin coming in, and they nice. grab Bengi. Bengi in a lot of trouble here. Gets low. There's the flashes. Hojin flashes as well. Ignite isn't enough. Actually, Bengi makes it out. Now Hojin getting low. There's the heal. Kuro trying to save him. First blood goes to Bang. Bang still taking a lot of damage, though. Bengi coming back in. Weird, weird fight. Bang tumbling, getting the damage onto Gorilla, and Bengi with a kill now. SKT, how do they turn these fights around? Baker Bang. comes in. Bang picks up another one, and now he's got the 1v1 on the Kuro. Kuro has to flash over the wall, and Bang with the double buffs. In good spot, Marin just gets the solo in bot lane, because why not? You know, everybody else is getting kills. Marin didn't want to be left out. I don't even know how Marin was able to get a solo kill in that bot bottom lane at level wow. three and level four. Marin not having much mana and having a lot of HP right there to finish that one off. I wasn't paying attention. And Faker well. living with just a sliver of HP flashing out at that last possible second. That was an unmitigated disaster for the Ku Tigers. Yeah, well, they tried to get that invade down. It all started with Hojin flashing and thinking he could finish off the kill on the Bengi. Unfortunately, instead of just taking the control over the top side and being happy with that, taking the red buff away, got a little bit greedy and then 
they kept fighting even after SKT was trying to turn it around. And Smeb may have been trying to prevent Marin from TPing is probably what happened because his mm. TP was down while Marin's was up. Oh, well, Bengi coming in. Going to mess with Curl a little bit. Ojin's right there, though, but with Wolf, it is a 2v3. And here comes Gorilla and Prey. Oh, Bengi and Wolf still chasing. Look at this. Marin coming down as well. Nice double knockup from Wolf coming in. They're going to jump onto Kuro. They're going to get a kill onto Kuro. Marin picking one up. And this one is already getting a little bit out of control. And there's the TP advantage coming into play. So Marin just has that up, goes into the top side, able to help out with the crowd control on the twisted advance. And now, wow. Faker has three assists, five kills on the board by five minutes for SK Telecom. And with a composition that is going to scale so well, this is terrifying for the Koo Tigers. That's a 2,000 gold lead at There's five all, minutes into the game. With this kind of scaling from Vayne and Maokai and Kog'Maw, there's almost nothing you could do here. Like, this should not have been happening this early in the game. SK Telecom should be behind in gold. They should be struggling just to keep themselves in it. And for them to already have such a lead is pretty incredible. You can see Bang completing his cutlass here <laughs> before Prey can even get an Avarice Blade. He just has a long sword. I mean, this is real bad. Yeah, uh, Ku just can't fight at this point. Their only, I mean, their only hope is to either get a massive pick, which you wouldn't think SKT would allow, or just farm, 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 and hope for a really good team fight, I suppose. Well, and that's been the Ku Tigers' consistent problem. It's not their late game play. They do a great job of side wave manipulation. They're very patient in terms of objectives. Uh, we see them having great late game shot calling, but they find themselves in a hole in the early game. They get outplayed in skirmishes early over and over and over again. Even in situations where that really shouldn't be happening, they have more power at that point in the game. And they get themselves into a big hole and they just can't get out of it. Well, if the Ku Tigers can come back, this would be one of the most incredible comebacks we've seen in Korea in a long time. Yeah, that's, I would be quite amazed. Oh, Marin. Jumping onto Smeb again, and I feel like Top Rek'Sai too is one of those champions that when he starts to fall behind, it gets pretty worrisome. I just want to know what the hell happened in that bottom lane. I don't know, man. Maybe he just didn't know his limits, I guess, which seems weird to say about Smeb, but what else do you explain it with? Knock up onto Marin, Smeb taking a lot of damage still. Yeah, Marin looking pretty comfortable in that top lane. Well, he's got such a lead now. Oh, yeah. He's got that Catalyst and two Doran's rings already. Yep, so he's just going to, even with that Rek'Sai sustain, Smeb not going to be dealing too much damage considering he has to go for a Cowl first as a result of Marin's rather large lead right now. Marin, the question is, is he going to go Glory or Rod of Ages? Mm -hmm. Bang is 2v1ing right now for a while. Why not? Both mid and uh, ADC positions for SKT with a nice little CS lead. Smeb has managed to keep up with Marn, which is Great nice. deep boards too. Look at Faker's positioning right now. While they oh, yeah. continue to apply pressure, Faker pushes in the mid lane, then just drops down to see if they need him because it's going to be a 4v3 and Bengi just taking all the advantages right now. Get some damage down. Well, Hojin took like a full damage barrel too. On his way out. Nice and fermented. Yep, that's right. The longer it, the longer it sits, the better the vintage. Look at the uh, the pink ward coverage there too. There's just nothing they can do. SK Telecom's ward coverage and invades have been so good tonight. They're playing around Vision incredibly well, and they're they've had a lot of early pink wards on the map, both in both games so far. Oh, Hojin against the wall. They've spotted him somehow, and Bang nearly getting a kill himself there. One v three. Man, well that gank didn't work out, did it? Up. There's level six as well, so Bang does have a level advantage on Prey, alongside everything else. And yep. both TPs up for top laners right now. Gorilla and Prey have to be very careful, especially because Hojin was just knocked out of lane, and they know there's a ward in that brush because Bang used it to get his condemn. Right. There's a ward a little bit closer for the Ku Tigers to use in case they need Smeb to come down. But yeah, SKT with a very easy position to play from. It's really their game to lose at this point. Yep, Marin getting pushed back a little bit as uh, Rek'Sai's 
natural tendencies come online a little bit there to deal some more damage, but oh, Bengi may be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, has to body slam over the wall to get out. Yeah, just trying to take the blue buff, seeing if he could actually make a play right there, and can't, so he'll just back off instead. Faker very comfortable just stacking up his tier in this mid lane. Oh yeah, he gets to deny a little bit of CS and experience to Kuro too. Yeah, go I mean, take his own blue he's buff. He's ahead in CS on a Kogma lane. Yeah. And Azir tend to be one of those more poke-oriented champions as well, but after that disastrous early game fight, Kuro not really willing to move too far forward, especially since they just don't have vision on the bottom side. Well, Bang is so strong right now, too, that we just saw Wolf just waltz up into the river. Oh, Hoji in a little bit of trouble, knocked against the wall with that explosive cask. Bang, will back out anyway, though. But yeah, Bang could just hold the lane 1v2 while Wolf went up and killed that ward in the river. And they're just maximizing, uh, just if we look at the way they're playing, Marin is perfectly safe. He's probably not going to die to Smeb and Hojin, considering that there's just not enough damage with this Rek'Sai yet in terms of itemization. Yep. Thank you, well. going to take that one. <laughs> so they just completely ward up the bottom side of the jungle. Don't give up the dragon. And they're playing around their lanes, which are the most exploitable at this point in time. Uh, you've got to keep Faker safe on that. Kog'Ma, he's been able to push up repeatedly to get that CS advantage. And, and you're taking away their buffs, and Meggy's just taking their entire jungle right now. Here yeah. we go. Oh, Prey taking a lot of damage. Ultimate use, though. There's a the knockup. Exhaust on the Prey as well. Bengi coming in. They're trying to make a plan to Gorilla now. Gorilla flashes out. And Prey and Gorilla heavily chunk, but it looks like they'll escape with their lives intact, though. Yeah, Bengi didn't have the explosive cask right there. He used it on Hojin in the jungle right. earlier, so there was no real follow-up to that gank. Oh, just a little of bit of damage, and Hojin there now. Wants to do something. Bengi's going to have that cask up pretty soon, however, so they can't hope for an extended fight. Smeb did have teleport right there. Meanwhile, Marin did not. Had to teleport back into topside, but Smeb not going to use it. And meanwhile, Smeb still doing okay in the top lane, all things considered. Keeping up on CS. Well, he's, he's winning in terms of lane pressure now, and Marin. Has a couple more minutes to wait for his TP. He went back, picked up some components for a Frozen Heart to deal with the Rek'Sai, but the Rek'Sai is really hard in top lane in a one-on-one -on -one environment. And now a little bit of a deep board right there. It's like Smeb just faked his back and now is going to push up one more time. Just keep Marin around as long as possible. Well, not a bad idea. Hojin trying to do a little bit of counter jungling himself. Going after the Raptors while Bengi takes the red buff here. And actually, Hojin coming in. There's the smite. And body slam onto Hojin. He's going to try to make something happen here. Wow, Hojin actually taking a lot of damage. There's the explosive cask. He may be in big trouble. No flash available. Gorilla comes up. Can he save him? No. Bengi with the kill there. Gorilla slowing. And he's going to try to make it on himself too. There's a knockup onto Kuro as Wolf comes in to the upper jungle. Marin kind of coming down to see if they can maybe do something here, but they don't even need to. They've already gotten the kill into Hojin. They've already pushed Smeb back. I mean, Bengi's two levels up. There's yeah. almost nothing you can do. And what Hojin is doing is he has to take risks to help get his team back in the game. If he doesn't do anything right here, if he doesn't deny Bengi in some way, he's already been starved out of his bottom side of the jungle almost completely. He's had his own blue buff contested. He has to go somewhere. But Bengi is really outsmarting him right now and choosing kind of where Hojin goes and is showing up at the right time for the kill. Yeah. But he's just, I mean, look at the farm difference. He's 20 CS up out of the jungle. It's a, it's a disaster, really. Yeah, pretty much. Gold lead has been uh, slowly increasing, too, for SK Telecom. And as Bang takes down this top turret, it'll get a nice little boost. Prey doing a little bit of damage to Faker. Kuro coming in as well. Faker forced to flash over the wall. Ah, but here comes Kuro. Flash Emperor's Divide onto Faker. Nice play. Faker trying to do enough damage to Kuro. Can't quite finish him off, though. Four so there's candy. a pick that the Kuka Tigers needed. Oh, it was close. Kathy in surprise. Yeah, Kuro had to use his heal right there in order to get out of that. Faker caught out alone in the middle of the map. And with that kind of mobility from Azir and and the Sivir ult, that's probably not something you're going to go get away from. Well, good play from Kuro, though. It was a good Emperor's Divide. The Bane gets the top turret anyway, so didn't end up too badly for SK Telecom. Ultimately, no. that objective more important than Faker's life. And let's talk about this. Faker has three assists. He's ahead in CS, actually. Yeah. And his first death is at 15 minutes or 14 minutes on Kog'Maw. 
This is uh, by mid Kogma standards. Not a bad game, actually. No, you not should at all. not be this far ahead. In fact, he probably should have died already. Most teams just focus that Kogma and abuse him early on, but instead he actually has an even lane, which means that this Ludens that's coming up soon is going to be really scary. There comes Vayne with an already completed Blade of the Ruined King and Berserker's Greaves. Oh, it's nice to have it 14 minutes into the game. Yeah, yeah, I'm always happy when I can get that, which is never for me, but Bang has it this game. <laughs> what a lucky guy he Pretty is. Pretty impressive. Well, Marin just defending his top turret. And Bang, we'll see how quickly he can push down the bot lane. Faker already putting pressure on the mid. Speed. Well, it's looking. You have to imagine, too, that SK Telecom is just going to have the easiest time taking all these dragons, too, when they come up. Oh, yeah. There's almost no way you can you can react to the poke damage from from uh, Faker's Kogma. And then, so the Tigers just, they just have to get a flank. They have to flank. Home guard flank with the Rek'Sai, get a flank with the Evelyn. A lot of their power has already been drained. And even this potent split pusher in the Rek'Sai cannot split push against Vayne. Yeah. He's got a Spirit Visage. He's not equipped to deal with an, uh, an AD carry. Uh, oh, neither is Bang, Prey, perhaps. popping that ult. Prey popping us to try to escape here. Gorilla comes in a little bit late. Bang gets ulted. Gorilla looking to get a bit bloodthirsty, but here comes Wolf with the shield. Now Gorilla in a lot of trouble. Tumbling under turret. There's a double for Bang. And the heal. Oh, Bang, come on. That was, a, that was actually a misplay. He didn't expect the monsoon no to come back in, so he sort of walked back under the turret. Now Wolf is going on uh. a suicide mission to prevent Hojin and Kuro from oh, getting oh, that oh. kill. Oh, gets poked once, <laughs> and that's a kill for Kuro. So Bang doing his best OQ impression while Faker takes down the mid lane turret. Things could be worse, but things getting a little bit goofy there for the moment. Yeah, and that tower going down is pretty important. Oh, hello. Okay. Well, that just happened then. And Hojin trying to put a little bit of hurt onto Bengi after seeing his mid laner just get absolutely evaporated. Bengi getting very low. Smeb coming in as well. Looks like they will be able to get the kill on Bengi eventually, I'd imagine. Faker raining damage down from the top. Marin. Though, and Marin coming in. Twist advance onto Prey. They're going to keep going with this, but it's a 4v1 right now. Can Faker zone well enough? Wow, Marin already getting so tanky here. Prey doing a decent amount of damage, though. Faker needs to be careful. Knock up onto Marin. I think SKT is starting to style a little bit here onto the Ku Tigers. This is, a this is a sustained 2v4, and Marin and Faker get the kill anyway. And Faker doesn't okay. have Echo yet. <laughs> doesn't no. have Echo. Impressive. Wow. Well, also, super fed everyone. Yep, super fed everyone. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Righteous Glory done for Marin now. Zeal added on for Bang after that uh, tussle in the bot lane tier. Still stacking for Faker. Can probably go back and finish that Ludens when he next returns to Fountain. Fake. Bang going to take down the bot lane turret. There's like an endless list of good things to say that are happening to SK Telecom right now. Well, they gave away a large minion wave and Bang's going to die. Well. Sometimes it's worth it. If you can go 1v1, the, the prey. Oh, not quite. It's close. <laughs> the fact that he nearly killed somebody in a 1v3, though, is yeah. not a good sign. I don't think we're really seeing the most serious uh, play suddenly out of SK Telecom. They got the turret, though, so yep. definitely worth the trade because Bang I would wasn't, say so. wasn't worth that bounty gold anymore either. So that's definitely a valuable trade for them to make, and SK Telecom continuing to pull further into the lead. And when will Faker go back and actually buy items? I guess the time now? is now. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no. Got to kill that ward first. Money. Oh, they got to stay in lane for a while now. He really needs that echo. Yeah, well, Baron's coming up in a minute 30. So if you can push this lane up, there we go. Now just recall, pick it up. You know, you got to be ready for that 20-minute Baron, right? That's right. Well, yeah. Bane is going to be going for the zero wave clear build with the Phantom Dancer. That's okay. You've got Maokai and, and Kog'Maw to take care of the wave clear. Going for Gragas, the, too. The sick 1v1s. Yep. Why not, you know? Okay, so Echo and Archangels oh. completed at the same time. And sure. He's going to get... He's getting pretty close, I would imagine. Probably another three or four minutes until that Seraph's Embrace is done. Be a little bit sooner. Why not? And now, Marin... So 1v3 is going to casually stroll away. Is there another way to stroll besides casually? 
I think it's implied. Aggressively? No. I don't think so. <laughs> Lackadaisically, <laughs> lackadaisically. Yes, yeah, so you can you can stroll in like a relaxed way, but you can also stroll in like kind of like a lazy, apathetic way. So there you go. There you go. Just have some ults there. Yeah, have Gorilla. some ults. And again, whoa, that's a lot of damage. Kuro, uh oh, he's in the gauntlet now. Time to play some Dance Dance Revolution. Meanwhile, Gorilla just dies in bot lane. Eventually, trust me, he will. I, he will cut. Don't worry. There we go. Okay, I was right. Now Banky may. Oh, nice ult from Wolf, actually. Bang entering the fray. Kuro pushes him back with the Emperor's Divide. That's a lot of damage onto Bang, actually. SKT still playing a little bit silly. And Bang uh, probably going to. Oh, not quite yet. There we go. Kuro picks up the kill there. Meanwhile, more action as Faker goes after Prey. Mid laner for ABC, but now everyone on Ku turning around. SK Telecom, we don't want to be here all night. Come on. <laughs> Come on, guys. Meanwhile, Martin's taking a tier 2 turret in the top side. Reminder that that was a 4v5 the entire time. Uh, I guess so, yeah. This is like a, we've somehow, we've jumped <laughs> off of the tournament realm. We're now spectating a solo queue game going on right now. <laughs> just happens to contain all the Q Tigers and SKT members. Yeah, that's, well, they're just using the names. It's not really these guys, you know. Well. Okay, then. That was a bold play from Bang, tumbling into an Azir that he knew had ultimate up and an AD carry. So basically, he just pounded his face into a wall and then got auto attacked a bunch of times by Bray. Showing us the line between brave and stupid <laughs> is indeed extremely thin. <laughs> yep, confirmed. Thank you, Bang. Yeah. This is just his, uh, his homage to OQ game. He's like, I didn't want MVP this game anyway after that great <laughs> team fight early on. And oh, the big, bang. The big lead that I got. Yeah. Well, they can do Baron really fast with Kogma and with Vayne right now. So yes, they can. That's one of the faster compositions you could do it with, of course, with the percent damage coming in from Kogma, regardless of whether he has a Blade of the Ruin King or not. Hmm. Well, Luden's finished for Kuro now. I think the most base in League of Legends is when you destroy a Rek'Sai tunnel. If you have like the base turned up, it just like the shakes rumbling. the whole room, you know? Rumble doesn't even rumble as much as that does. No, Rumble hardly rumbles at all. No! It's mostly just squeaky and annoying. Yeah. There you go. One ult. Corelli. Two thirds HP now. And we talked about the damage to champions from the last time Faker played a poking mid laner with that Varus and this Faker's skill shot accuracy. You don't want him on those poking champions. We remember what he used to do on mid lane and it was spectacular, but ugly for enemy teams because of his spear accuracy. And now we're starting to see that come around again. I want to Kogma skin that has like an orbital laser strike for an ultimate. You know, you just shoot up like a little laser beam to uh, help target. Use the orbital laser thing from uh, Earth mode that right, one week. Here we go. Yeah, Marin is coming in from behind onto Gorilla and Prey. There's the ult onto Bang, and he's locked up for just a moment here. Prey popping the ultimate, backing off. Marin's going to chase with that twist advance anyway. Kuro coming from the river right now. Baker entering the fray now with a lot of damage. Bang extremely low. And there's a kill, actually, for Bengi on the fray before anything else happens. Hojin on the run now as well. Marin and Bengi chasing down Gorilla. There's a kill. Kuro manages to take out Wolf, but a double kill for Bengi as SK Telecom looking to finish this one up. Marin comes in for the kill onto Hojin and SKT having to back off, having to play it safe. Smeb and Kuro on the run right now. Bang and Faker coming in for this one a second time. There goes Smeb. Faker with the kill there. Kuro the only one left, and he is not in any position to fight. Backing off, trying to run for his life, and that's Kuro. just going to be more objectives for SKT. This is just SKT being so far ahead right now, but Kuro actually team fought that really well. He divided the team up so Faker and Bang couldn't actually clean that one up. Right. If Bengi and Marin didn't have such an insane advantage already and weren't so fed, that fight probably would have gone over to the Ku Tigers. But again, the Tigers showing that they can hang with it in terms of team fighting and strategy in the late game, but they get too far behind early. Oh Goodbye, boy. Gorilla. Goodbye, Gorilla. Well, that was not a long life for Gorilla after he came back. And look at this, too. Here's the teleport on the way in. And 
gets onto Gorilla. Gorilla gets caught out a little bit, but watch the Sand Soldiers from, from Kuro right here because he does a lot of damage with the tools that he's given, and he's going to be able to zone them out. Great Monsoon from Wolf to save Bang. He gets a little more HP, then he's going to get the uh, exhaust onto Hojin. But Wolf and... Uh, or I'm sorry, Bar and Bengi going in onto Hojin. There's the flash twisted advance to finish the kill. And Kuro just constantly dealing poke damage from the outside. He's doing all he can with that Luton's Echo onto the Azir, getting some more damage down yet again. It's just everyone too tanky on that front line. Yeah. That really is just it. SK Telecom is just so ridiculously far ahead. Kuro coming in, pushes back fake with that Emperor's Great Divide. Play. There's the ult. Wolf pushes people back, though, from Gorilla. Hojin comes in. That's a kill, actually, on the Gorilla immediately. Faker very low as well. Dies. Kill comes in for Prey. Bengi on the run there. Ku Tigers turning this one around off that double kill from Kuro. Marin comes back in, wants to get the kill on his ear. He's able to do it with his ultimate. And no so one. Still two for three. Here comes Bang. We can take out this turret and keep on rolling if they yes, want to. Can. Just keep pushing up. Looks like they are going to be able to get away. Final hour popped from Vayne but no additional kills. And Kuro's Azir is really holding the Ku Tigers in this game in spite of a lack of Baron. That was a great engage against the Baron up team. SK Telecom was split up. But wow, that's, that's about right. all they could do with that kind of deficit. And that's the thing. I mean, this would have been a very close competitive game if that huge lead hadn't been taken early on by SK Telecom. It's kind of another one of those, it's like another game where one fight kind of uh, decided the game almost. Yeah. Well, now the, that to fight jump early on, on. So just if you give SKT any kind of lead like that, they're able just to push it through, especially with a composition like the one that they have. Yep. And there's the Relonomicon for Kog'Maw as well now. Why not? Couple I mean, against Aegis, I'm surprised he doesn't have the Void Staff yet. Hmm. Aegis Spirit Visage, but it's okay. I mean, obviously, he's very far ahead in general. I suppose you get a little bit more CDR from the Morello Namicon, too, as well. Now, the Banna also very important to, yeah. to Kog'Maw. But two blue buffs on SKT, one for Faker, one for Bang right now, so mana's not going to be an issue. Marin can face check whatever the hell he wants right now. Wolf's like, I, I can't face check this bush, man. Can you do it? Marin's like, sure, man, I'm Tanky Maokai. I can face check any bush. Doesn't matter how many Garens are in there. Well, he can. Three items already before this dragon spawn right here and this next fight. The setup is already good for SKT. Starting to play a little bit more methodically. Yep. This will be dragon number three. Should be an easy take. Well, they're still on track for a, a pretty quick closeout here as well, too. We're still sub 30 minutes. And it's five to one in turrets. Three to zero in dragons, one to zero in barons. 29 kills out of a 27 minute game. I'm, I'm happy. I feel pretty good about this one, Monty. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you like SK Telecom, you're gonna feel pretty good about what happened. Wasn't the most exciting game a, a lot of the time, just due to the shenanigans that happened very early on. Sometimes Last game was definitely a lot more exciting, but SK Telecom's closure, in terms of their individual decision making, hasn't been the best, but when we talk about which side of the map they were playing and the timings they were hitting in terms of their invades and how well Bengi played, particularly around Hojin, it was quite impressive. Uh, game number two, just because of that early fight, ended up being a little bit more of a victory lap than an actual game for SK Telecom. So here we go. They got the pressure in the top side, too. And they just keep on rolling this yep. vein. They can close it up pretty casually, too, because like you mentioned earlier, too, SK Telecom is going to scale so well into the late game that there really is no rush. It's only going to get worse for the for the Tigers. The only really great scaling champion they have is this Sivir. And beyond that, they don't have the engage that, besides a flank, really. Right. Rek'Sai is not a reliable form of primary engage. Does have the, uh, the Sivir ult, which helps, however. And Evelyn, look at where the pink ward is in that lane. Look at what uh, the uh, that SK Telecom have already done. They have a pink ward right behind them to make sure that that's not going to happen. Yeah, SKT coming in. Uh, Bang actually taking a lot of damage. Has to be a bit careful about going that too far forward. That far forward, because it is too far forward. It is. Going to just auto the Gromp, though, and get some health back. And now... Auto the Gromp. 
head right back into lane. Oh, Baron, of course, Baron back up in a minute 30 now. Oh, SKT may need that objective to close this one. They don't have the best way to auto the turret just because the Kogma in this composition, even with Bioarcane Barrage, not going to be doing the most damage. So what is Faker going to get? Probably Void Staff, I would assume. Yep, there, there it is. is. Just one. <laughs> Buying in one go. Okay. Oh, and he gets the sword shoes too. Yeah, Faker doesn't like it. You know, he doesn't buy parts of items, man. He just buys the <laughs> whole thing. I certainly know Rush. He's already in such a lead that he can hold on to a bank of gold and still feel very comfortable about winning these team fights. And now... Why not? Just taking out some wolves. Getting yep. a little bit more CS. Push out the mid lane. Faith Baron should be pretty textbook finish for SKT. I would say that Baron up in about 35 seconds now. Man, if you're the Koo Tigers, it just has to feel horrible because you know right now at this point in the game, it's probably not going to work out. You know, you would have to get like a miracle fight to win this one. Yeah, you'd have to get some insane flank. They're doing their best to turtle right now. They have that as here, which can prolong the lengths of games with those sun turrets, but a nice. turret uh, not really too impactful right now, considering that SK Telecom just wants to take this Baron in 10 seconds, and they're going to stop pushing your base after they move the minion waves right up on your doorstep. And here we go. Yep, Baron immediately started by Bang. Here comes Wolf as well to tank a little bit with the shield, but SKT should have no problem at all taking this. Wow, look at how fast it's going down, too. That's not bad. And so there we go. Okay, easy Baron. Marin teleporting, or not teleporting, recalling back to pick up something. I think he picked up Thorn Mail, but either way, he's got the teleport to yep. get back there if they need him. Grab that Thorn Mail before rushing to push the bottom lane so they can get much pressure as possible and here we go right into the siege yep and this time with those baron minions it should go a little bit better gonna have to wait for probably a cannon minion wave before oh they can my really put look, it on at look at HP the bar. damage wow poor prey and baron just slowly moving up gorilla taking a big caustic spittle shot right there as the ults continue to rain down on the heads of the Ku Tigers. And Pretty much, here comes the teleport now. Marin coming in, and that's enough to scare the Tigers back. SKT gets the turret going in onto the inhibitor. Now it's going to go down extremely quickly, and I don't think anyone can stop the SK Telecom bulldozer at this point. No, now the question is, where are they going to transition to next? Looks like they may just go bottom side. Makes sense. Walk all the way across the base, <laughs> not going to tank the top lane turret. No, why not? Up bigger. Has oh, they're flash. going in. Yeah, Wolf flashing away as well, too. Baron coming in. Baker actually taking a lot of damage. Smeb on top of them. That's a kill for Kuro. Bang, though, starting to go a little bit crazy here. There goes Smeb. GA pop. There goes Kuro. Double kill for Bang, actually. There was no GA. And that's going to be about it. Gorilla backing away. Marin just tanking a turret hit for the fun of it. Kuro, they lost Faker, but they had to commit everything to it. And that let Bang just had a field day. Yeah, but Kuro has been playing around this Kog'Maw so well that it's a real shame that we didn't get to see a more even early game to see what exactly Kuro was going to be able to pull off to shut down Faker because his Azir has been quite good in team fights, actually. Yeah. Well, Gorilla, a support against the world right now. And there's only so much you can do. And it's not enough to take the game. SK Telecom will win it 2-0 in dominating fashion. GG. Yeah, that's about all you could say. Game one was pretty close until yeah. T1 had that big breakout moment in that team fight, 4v5 in the mid lane. And this one was determined very early on, them getting a huge edge in a skirmish that resulted in their scaling composition hmm. coming into power far before it should have hit its normal spike. And Tigers, man, again, you look at this team, you look at what Kuro was doing to Faker here in the late game, catching him out and using that as zero ult very well, but they always find themselves playing from behind. Why does this happen to this team? It was just that one crucial moment in both of those games that ended up being something they couldn't overcome. So that'll be the 2-0 for SKT yeah. as...